we're going to take another look at some exponential functions, but this time we're going to look at exponential decay. Now, again, the exponential function has the variable in the exponent. So b is going to be a number that's called our base, and x is our variable. So if we had 4 raised to the x, that would be an exponential function. Okay, now with exponential decay, when you have a, b to the x, if a is bigger than 0, and then b is between 0 and 1, the function is exponential decay, which means it's going to be coming down as you go to the right. If you have a greater than 0 and b is greater than 1, it's exponential growth, which we've already taken a look at. So t we're going to be working on exponential decay this time. Here's our first example. We have 0.2 raised to the x. Our job is to graph it. So we're going to do just another table of values, and I'm going to pick negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now remember, if you start with these values, you don't have to use all of them in your um, graph. If they don't turn out to be decent numbers or if they get too big, don't use them. So the first thing we're going to do, we are going to plug in the negative 3 in for the x value. Well, when we plug that in, we have 0.2 raised to the negative 3. Now remember, a negative exponent does not make our value negative. It makes it go to the denominator. So this is really 1 over 0.2 raised to the third. And when you um, divide that all out, you get 125. So that number I may or may not include in my graph. It's a pretty big number. We'll see where the rest of these land. Okay, then I'm going to plug in the negative 2. Again, it doesn't make my value negative. It makes it go to the denominator. So I have 1 divided by 0.2 to the second. When I do that, I get 25. I'm going to continue on with them. Negative 1 will give me 5. 0 will give me 1. 1 is going to give me 0.2. 2 gives me 0 0.04. And 3 gives me 0 0.008. So based off of my numbers, I'm not going to graph negative 3, 125. I'm going to start at the negative 2. So at negative 2, I'm clear up here to 25. You know what? I might not even graph that one based off of these other numbers. I'm going to start with negative 1. So there's negative 1, positive 5. 0 takes me to 1. 1 takes me to 0.2. 2 is 0.04, and 3 is 0 0.0004. So now, if you look at um, our graph here, had I graphed negative 225, that would be up here somewhere. So my graph is coming down like this. And see how these are starting to flatten out towards the bottom? That's because we have another asymptote here. We have a horizontal asymptote again at the line y is equal to 0. So that is our horizontal asymptote, meaning our our values are going to approach it, but they're never actually going to get to it. So that would be my exponential decay graph. Okay, here's the second example. Again, I'm going to do a table of values, my xy chart. And here, you have to realize the 3 is not attached to the exponent part. So you are going to do 1 half to the x first, then multiply it by 3. So I'm just going to start out with my negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And when I plug those in, okay, when I plug those in, when I put negative 3 in here, I get 24. When I put negative 2 in, I get 12. Negative 1 gives me a 6. 0 gives me a 3. 1 gives me 1.5. 2 gives me 0.75. And 3 gives me 0.375. Okay, so now when I graph these, if I do 3, I get 0.375, and 2 gives me 0.75, 1 gives me 1.5, 0 takes me clear up to 3, negative 1 takes me up to 6, and negative 2 takes me up here to 12. So I'm not going to put the 3, or negative 324 on my graph. Okay, and then I sketch it in. Notice again, it's starting to level out down here at the bottom. 
and that's because I'm going to be approaching that asymptote of y equals zero for my horizontal asymptote. Okay, example three, this one's going to include some shifting. I have a minus four here that's attached to the x, so that's going to move my whole graph right four units, and then the plus two is gonna move everything up two units, but I'm still gonna graph it the same general way. So I'm going to graph um, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and four. And when I plug those values in, I'm gonna fill in my y values now. Okay, when I started doing my table of values with the normal values, it got really big numbers, so I wasn't gonna graph any of those. And when you're doing this, if you think about it ahead of time, since it's shifted to the right, instead of starting at negative three, I might wanna start four units to the right. Um, if you don't pick that up right away, that's fine. You can always extend your table of values. So I'm actually going to start graphing by the 2, comma 13. So when I plot that one, that'll be kind of one of my higher points. Okay, and then I'm going to graph 3, and then the 5.3. And 4 takes me up to 3. 5 takes me up to 2.3. 6 is 2.09, and 7 is 2.03. Now notice this time, my values are starting to level out, not down here by y equals 0, but they're up here by the line y equals 2. And that's because I had a vertical shift of up 2. So my horizontal line this time is y equals 2. Then I can connect them, and I have my graph. Okay, we're gonna look at how depreciation fits into exponential decay. Now, most things that you buy depreciate over time. So this is the formula that we use for depreciation. It's very similar to our compound interest formula. One of the main differences is that now we have one minus R because we're depreciating. So it says that you purchase a new car for $34,000. That would be our A value. The value of the car decreases by 19% each year write the exponential decay model for the value of the car after t years. What will be the value after five years? So the first one, it wants us to write a model for the value after t years. So I'm going to put in my f of x, actually it would be f of t, since I'm gonna do it for t years, is equal to 34,000, because that's my initial amount times one minus, now when I use my 19%, my rate, I have to change it to 0.19, and then raised to the t years. You can simplify part of this out. You can do the one minus the 0.19 and get the 0.81, so I would have 34,000 times 0.81 raised to the t but you cannot multiply the 34,000 by that 0.81 because the 0.81 is attached to an exponent and in your order of operations the exponent comes before the multiply. So here is my model for this particular card depreciating at 19%. Then the second part says what will be the approximate value of the car after five years? So now I can go ahead and plug in that five for the t. So I'm gonna have 34,000 times 0.81 raised to the fifth power. And when I do that, the car is going to be worth about $11,855 after five years.